Now, I don't think that I'm alone in thinking that the Minecraft villages need an update. At this point in the game and the way that it's been for a while, there are five village types. You can have your plains villages, your desert villages, taiga villages, savanna, and snowy villages. And obviously, there are way more than five biomes in Minecraft. I feel like there are so many other biomes that certainly deserve to have their own village. So today I'm going to start a brand new project in my hardcore Minecraft world. I am going to be making a village in nearly every biome that doesn't already have one. And the reason I say nearly is because if you think of a jungle, there's like a bunch of different biomes within a jungle itself. Like you have your normal jungle and then you also have jungle edge biomes and bamboo jungle biomes. Uh, those are all technically counted as separate biomes, but I'm going to, you know, include those all together. In this video, we're going to be focusing on two different biomes. We're going to have the Birch Village and the Dark Oak Village. So then, without further ado, let's fully get started with this episode. Actually, really quickly, before we get started, I wanted to say uh, that, like, part of the way through this video, I completely overhaul the mods I'm using and download an entirely new list. This is the list of mods that I downloaded recently, or almost all of them. I didn't actually use every single link here, um, but of course, as you can see, this is provided by Fwip. These are the mods that he uses in his hardcore series, and and they make the experience of the game a lot better. Some of these are just for content creation, but a lot of them also just improve uh, the performance of the game. So if you're struggling with performance issues or just want some other visual changes, these links are very useful. I do have one other goal I would like to accomplish before we do anything with villages. That other goal is a very simple one. I just want to complete my beacon. All right, so last time we built an iron farm and it was horrible, okay? Like I could go check it now, but it probably doesn't even have a stack of iron. And that was going throughout like all last episode. So it's really bad. Uh, we currently have 54 blocks of iron. I think you need like what, just over two stacks to make a full beacon. I'm just gonna go mining. I should be good if I can just find one of those really big iron veins underground. So we're gonna start today by doing that. Of course, though, let me show off what I did last time. I always like to show off the build of the previous episode at the beginning of the next one. Uh, this build is completely in the nether. I slammed my face. That kind of hurt. I'm gonna break my ankles. Um, but this build is completely in the nether. We spent a lot of time on the nether roof last episode. Building a nether hub. That looks horrible from the inside, but from the outside... Looking pretty schnazzy, if you ask me. We built this really big, like, spooky mansion. You can go back and watch that episode if you missed it, if you would like to see the process of this build. This is easily the biggest building I've ever made in Minecraft. And honestly, admittedly, it's not completely done. Okay, you're gonna see these gaps here. Because I want to put, like, a balcony. I just didn't get around to doing that yet. Alright, something else I would like to point out. Uh, I have a Twitter. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter... Link to that is in the description down below. I don't really tweet super often, but if you'd like to connect with me in any other way, uh, you know, feel free to check out my Twitter down below. And I don't have any torches. Oh, I'm a dingus. That was a little close. I probably played that like a complete moron, but we're alive. It's fine. Uh, I would have been okay anyway because of my totem. <laughs> but still, we're chilling. Did I find one? Is this one? This looks like it could be one. It's definitely one. Sweet. All right, let's mine all this out. We got so much iron from this one vein, there's probably still even more. But we have one, two, three, four, five, nearly six stacks of iron ore. I think that's probably good to leave with. I guess let's grab the little bits on the way out and then... We can break all this down and see how much we actually end up with. All the iron has been mined up and we got a lot of stacks of raw iron. Uh, I don't have a crafting table on me, so let me go check out how many blocks this is. That was enough for about a stack and a half blocks. I do not have enough iron, I don't believe. According to Reddit, um, it says you need two stacks and 36, which I'm not going to have. I'm very close though, so that's good. Do I have any leftover iron here? Yeah, I have a little bit. It's enough for a couple more blocks, I suppose. And probably just AFK the iron farm for the rest while all this stuff is smelting. Because we don't actually need that many more. Alright, let's go do that. I should have enough iron blocks now to make a full beacon, so that is super nice. And now, up next, we just have to go gather a whole bunch of materials. I'm going to start by gathering materials for the Birch Village. I was able to gather a lot of stuff just from my storage room here. 
And I think we can make a very, very good start on this village with the blocks we have here. So we have most of a shulker here uh, filled with some stone and some brick. This is what the chimneys are going to be out of. I haven't completely decided yet if I want to use stone blocks or if I want to have like a brick chimney uh, for these buildings. The birch village is going to have two different buildings with two different pallets. The first pallet is going to be all these blocks for the walls. Now all the birch logs will be stripped, don't worry about that. So it'll have like a gradient going from the oak wood to the birch and then to the sandstone, kind of like what we did with the Colosseum a couple episodes ago. And then we're probably going to use a lot of spruce somewhere, I don't exactly know where just yet, but I will definitely make use of all the spruce. Got a whole bunch of dark oak as well, I'm sure I'll make use out of that. And then we have deep slate. So. The building that has this pallet for the walls will have a deep slate roof. Not super sure which kind of deep slate just yet. We might kind of just like mush them all together just to add a little bit of texture, but it'll certainly be deep slate. And then the other pallet is going to be these white blocks. We're going to have the calcite. We're going to have diorite. We'll have polished diorite. And then that roof, I think it's going to have a spruce trim with birch in the middle. I also forgot to mention that we have some amethyst blocks and a little bit of shards. I want to get more of those for sure um, because... My idea, right, with the Birch Village and the Dark Oak Village, they're both kind of going to be magical in a way. That's kind of how I view both of those biomes. I always imagine the Dark Oak Forest to be like a magic forest that is completely like dark and shrouded on the inside. Maybe it's some kind of like dark magic, maybe some evil magic. I don't really know. And then the Birch is like the opposite of that. It's going to be more like light magic, the maybe less evil magic. I don't know. But I, I definitely think the block of amethyst will work. We can probably just have some clusters just like floating in the sky. That'll be kind of cool. But I do think with this, we should be able to start construction. Now we just have to find a birch biome I want to build in. And preferably, I want to find a birch biome that is really close to a dark oak biome, which happens all the time. I don't know if that's actually a thing in this game, but I always find dark oak biomes like at the end of a birch biome. I think I actually quite like down that way. This was actually where I was gathering all my dark oak from. That's actually pretty funny. So I guess we cleared out a nice area here to start the dark oak village, but we're going to start that second. Let me move over here, clear out a big area of birch trees, and we can start placing down some blockage. Yeah, so this looks like a mess, but let me explain. So, this structure right here, that is just all the birch logs, I want this to be a fountain. The placement of this is definitely subject to change, the beacon's just kinda in the way. I would ideally like to push this more this direction just so it's more central around all the buildings. And we're gonna have four houses surrounding this central uh, fountain, and they're all pretty much the same size. They look very similar, they're all just a little bit different in their own kind of ways. This one here looks really weird, but it's just because there's so many different levels of elevation right here. I'll certainly fix that once we actually start building. My thought is that the pathway will connect all the way around the fountain. We'll then have smaller pathways branching off into the houses, and then the pathways will also meet back up again up here and then lead into a much bigger building. I didn't really mention this yet, but I think each of these villages is going to have like a big staple building that kind of like fits the theme of the village, at least the, the theme that I'm going for. So for example, I think we're going to have like a school at the end here. Maybe that's where people can study magic. I don't really know. There's some lore there probably. And then like in the Dark Oak village, I want to have like a big library. That kind of makes sense. We can have some like enchanted books. Maybe that's like the dark side of the magic in this world. We'll have to come up with some other signature buildings in the future once I start making more of these custom villages. But definitely for now, I think that's a good start. And I think the school fits with this area quite well. I think it's time though that I cut away to a time lapse. Let's start building up one of these buildings. I'm going to start with this one right there. We have one house mostly built. I kind of forgot to bring over all my green blocks, like all the leaves I have, like the mossy stuff just to decorate the exterior with. I forgot all that stuff, so we have to make a trip back home, go grab some, and then we can actually completely finish this thing. But this is definitely the vibe I was going for. And I think this color palette looks really good. The plan then is to have one more of these houses out of the final three. One more of them is going to be this exact color palette. The other two then will be a different color palette. I think they'll mesh pretty well together. But I like how this one looks. I think it fits into a birch biome pretty well. I also forgot a campfire. I definitely will forget that again. 
Even if I bring it, I'll probably forget to throw it up there. But let's head back home really fast so we can load up on some green blocks. That was the sickest, like, glide I've ever done. I have no idea how I just did that, but whatever. <laughs> I almost forgot this, but I'm gonna bring my beacon because uh, I'm gonna go collect some more deep slate as well. We're going to need more to finish off the next house in the same color palette because of course we need deep slate for the roof and i am almost completely out so let me grab my beacon we're down here in the deep slate mine we have our full beacon set up let me just go fill up this entire shulker with this deep slate on second thought i'm actually not going to fill up this entire shulker because i don't actually think i need to this should be plenty because i only do need this for the roof of one more building i loaded up on a bunch of random stuff now some of it i might end up using like the different moss variants i might incorporate those somewhere uh, but then we have like white concrete powder and this is certainly going to be used i'm going to use this in the walls of one of the buildings the building where i'm going to be using calcite and diorite and stuff white concrete powder looks really good with those blocks i prefer the concrete powder as well over the concrete itself because the powder just has more texture to it i think it works better uh, in a wall at least in this example all right you've gotten to the point in the video where i have completely overhauled all of my mods all right i'm, I'm planning on saying something at the beginning of this episode about that so I really hope future Shram remembers to put that in. And if not, he will have to record that point once he edits this section of the video. This is getting like weirdly meta right now. But anyway, yeah, um, I wanted to point out one of the mods I downloaded. It is this mod that makes it so if it's dark in a cave or dark outside, it does not look dark. So as you can see, this is completely lit up. This is what it would normally look like. But the gamma is hacked or modded whatever to like 1500. So now every cave is like perfectly lit up. I don't think it's an issue that I have this on. A lot of other Minecraft YouTubers have this setting turned on. Maybe it's something I turn off once I start a new world again. Just because I feel like part of the danger of going mining early on is not being able to see what is around you without torches, you know? So maybe I turn this off when I'm actually genuinely doing some mining at the start of a new world. But I feel like at the point... I am in this world it's fine to have on but i have finally switched over to sodium i've been told by so many people to do this i'm using sodium i'm using fabric i'm using iris all those words that i wasn't really too familiar with before uh, but we're using all of these it actually has given me a much better performance in this game i am like stuttering a lot less which is beautiful so if you're looking to maybe enhance your own minecraft performance then certainly go ahead and download some of the links i mentioned uh, earlier i'm hoping that i remember to put up an image of what Flip has downloaded in his world because that's kind of what I just did. I just went down his entire list and just downloaded like everything. I can't tell if the leaves look different to me. I feel like they look a little bit weird. Oh my god, that is the most cursed thing I've ever seen. Get that off of my screen, please. All right, anyway, <laughs> now that that nightmare is gone, they look a little bit weird. Maybe I'm just seeing things. I don't know. Let's just continue building. We are going to work on this house over here next, I think. And this one is going to be a different color palette. This is going to have the white walls. So we're going to have calcite, diorite, white uh, concrete powder. Also, probably some birch wood. That actually looks pretty good with this, you know, color palette we have going. And then the roof of this one will be out of spruce wood as the trim and then a birch wood on the inside. So let's cut it away to another time lapse and let's start building this bad boy. The building's not finished, but I kind of just wanted to give you guys an update. I am completely out of calcite. So I have to go gather some more of that, but here's a work in progress of the building. I'm liking how it's turning out so far. I think the color palette is definitely working out well. But there's a whole bunch more stuff we have to do to this, and I don't want to do anything else until I get more calcite. I found a geode. That was actually perfect. <laughs> I just flew right into this random cave, and it was right here. Nice. All right, I'm fairly certain I got all of the calcite out of this geode. Or at the very least, I got a ton of it. That should be enough for the two houses, you know, that we're going to use the white color palette for. Let's just go finish this house then. Another structure is done. Uh, it still looks very bare, I'm aware. Okay, um, yeah. But I will fix that once we actually bring in some decoration for the outside. We got two more buildings left to go. This one here is going to be this color palette. And that one over there will be this color palette. Now I know for sure when I build this building again, I'm going to need more spruce wood. So to procrastinate that a little bit longer, let's build this one because I think I should have all the materials for that.
One more house is built. Just copied the same design as over there. And I just realized I missed the chimney. All right, one second. All right, we now have a chimney. Looking a lot better. Now for this last house, we're gonna need to fill up on spruce wood. I think it's probably time then to set up another portal here and get onto the roof again. Light this portal back up and this should hopefully take us directly back to the birch forest. And it does, perfect. All right, we can get back very easily now. Let's go do that and fill up this shulker uh, entirely with spruce. I have gathered up so much spruce wood in this world, it's insane. <laughs> this is definitely the most spruce wood I have ever gathered in one world. Let me check out how many I have actually mined. 13,571. Netherrack is still the top, but still, a lot of spruce wood in this world. That actually just took over number two. It was previously stone. Um, yeah, that's definitely the most spruce wood I've ever mined in one world. This is the longest I've ever played a Minecraft World 4, so it makes sense. But geez, I think I've used spruce wood in literally every single thing I've ever built in this world. <laughs> and with that out of the way, we can start constructing the final house of this village. The fourth house is now finished. Well, at least the structure is. You know how it goes by now. Uh, we will be doing the rest of the exterior decoration here in a little while. But the base structure is up. And this is what like the main courtyard area is going to look like, at least in terms of these buildings. Obviously, a ton more work to do down here. Uh, but I do want to move up here now. And we can start laying out like the bigger building in this area. It'll probably be a little bit bigger than these houses. I don't want to make anything massive. But I don't want to make it the same size as these homes. So let me just go grab some birch wood and we can kind of line out how big this build is going to be. We also certainly have to clear out an area back here. I think this level is probably good to start clearing out. So let's do this for a little while, get ourselves a nice big area to build on, and then we can lay out the dimensions of this building. I cleared out a pretty big area and I put down this structure thing here, this outline, I guess is a better word for it. And this is what I'm thinking of for this building. Now I wanna have the entrance right here and we're gonna have two bits of the building that extend past the entrance on either side. I think it'll look kind of cool. So the main like part of the building will be over here. I guess we could probably have some other rooms like classrooms and stuff over in this direction. But the main rectangle I kind of started off with is this one right here. But with the outline down, let's go ahead and actually start building this thing. All right, so all of the buildings are in place. The school has just been finished. I think it looks pretty cool. Has an interesting shape to it, has a nice color palette, I think. It fits very well in the area. And now we have to work on the exteriors of everything. So we have to do the path around the whole area. We have to build up this fountain and we have to like decorate the rest of the buildings by putting some leaves everywhere, putting in some windows, doing some other exterior decoration stuff. So still a decent amount to do. I've also thought about something else. I'm going to take down this little canopy here. I'm just going to do this instead. I think it looks fine. But I guess the next order of business should probably be the centerpiece. It should probably be the fountain. And I got to be honest, I have no idea what to do for this. I kind of just consulted Google. I looked up just Minecraft fountain design. And I found a couple nice pictures. I'll throw a couple of them on the screen. And I'm going to take a bit of inspiration from these, at least from the shape, because I have no idea what to do for this thing, man. Just throwing down some random blocks kind of at the moment. We're going to see how this goes. It looks really bad because it's just cobblestone, but maybe after some texturing, it'll look a little bit better. So let's work in some more blocks and let's see what it looks like in the end, I guess. After a little bit of texturing, I definitely think it looks better. Uh, now we just kind of have to put like a little ring around this thing to actually catch the water. As of now, I just have tough blocks right there blocking the water. But let's kind of just throw down like a ring of slabs, I guess. I think this is a good size then all the way around. Um, I think we should be able to go ahead then and just decorate these slabs a little bit more. So let's break up the pattern because I just kind of threw down all the cobblestone slabs I had and then finish them off with regular stone slabs. So let's break this up, add a little bit more texture in between here with some mossy slabs as well. I'm also going to go ahead and bring a few of these up a little bit, make it a little bit weird. I think that'll look kind of cool. I think I'm comfortable with that. A few of those are brought up a little bit more. I think it looks kind of cool. Now let's let the water go. And that should fill out this entire thing. Maybe I'll actually use more water to fill it out all evenly. 
Yeah, that looks really bad when it's not even. Let me go do that. There we go. The water is all nice and still. And then I realized that areas where I left just one slab, I want to put another one on top of because it looks really weird with the water like that. And I think as well, just to add a little bit of spruce to this to make it look a little bit different, to spruce it up. I, all right, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, to actually add a little bit more color to this. Let me go grab some spruce signs, and let me kind of just add these wherever I can. Now, I can't put them all over the place, but maybe we can put some bushes around here to cover up the spots I can't put them. Also hit a super secret sign in the middle there. I wonder what it says. I don't know. Next up then, I think I want to work on the path. And I'm not going to do any crazy path design for this. I'll probably just use a whole bunch of path blocks. And then I'm thinking just like spruce wood or something. That usually looks good. But I do want to make this area look a little bit better first. So let me do a little bit of terraforming here. All right, I think I like this terrain a little bit more. Didn't do all that much to it, but kind of just flattened out some bits. Just gave myself a little bit more room around the uh, fountain as well. But I guess let's just kind of start here. And let's just go start making a big old path around this whole area. Got ourselves just a very basic path for now. We will add a bit more texture to this for sure. But it at least runs all the way through this area and goes up to the school. And we also have little branching off bits to each house. And to texture up this path, instead of using spruce like I said I was going to, we are going to use some sandstone, some stripped birch logs, some birch planks, and then some oak and stripped oak. That'll probably look good. I threw down most of this path and I hate it. I really don't like how these blocks mesh together. So um, I'm just going to switch this out probably for like coarse dirt. Something really simple. Yeah, I think the coarse dirt looks way better. The wood just looked really out of place. Let me go gather a whole bunch of leaves then. And we can finally start putting leaves everywhere in this village and giving it a lot more life. We got a lot of leaves. Hopefully this is enough. But let's go start throwing these all over the place. I'm actually going to begin by sort of bordering off the path here with a bunch of leaves and probably some fences and walls. We can probably use some birch fences and then like sandstone walls. Yeah, that'll probably look good. This area is definitely coming a bit more alive with all these bushes looking pretty cool. Now we definitely need some light in this place at night. So let me grab all of my lanterns, which are somewhere. If I can find them, there we go. I have 33 lanterns here. I can always head back home and, you know, go back to the iron farm and everything to get a little bit more. But I'm gonna check a few of these on top of some of the fences, on top of the walls as well, just so this place is nice and lit up at night. Also around the fountain, why not? Yeah, so I think the pathway is nearly done. The last thing I would like to do is add some bone meal everywhere just to give the area even more life. It's looking nice and overgrown. That's perfect. I think it looks so much better now. Just bone meal is such a simple thing you can do to your areas, but I feel like it enhances them so much. I think we are on now the last little bit of exterior decoration to this area, and then we can kind of call it done. And that decoration is all going to be focused on the buildings. We have done nothing to the outsides of these buildings, so we got to add a whole bunch of stuff Got to add some more leaves kind of draping off of the roofs. We got to add some more like barrels and hay bales and composters, all that fun stuff all around the area and especially lanterns. I haven't put lanterns anywhere on these buildings. This might take a little while, but it'll improve the builds so much. So I didn't actually end up doing all that much exterior decoration. I kind of just threw down some leaves and some lanterns around the buildings and I think it looks really good the way it is. I don't really think I need anything else. I don't really want to over decorate or anything like that. I think I'm in a pretty comfortable spot with this village. Um, I do wish I had more like the bigger amethyst like clustered things. Like I only had one pretty big one and I put it over there. The rest of these are pretty small, but it's okay. Uh, maybe I can come back and replace these later. I went back to the geode I found earlier in the video, and uh, we only had the small ones there. I didn't really want to wait there for them to grow, so we're chilling with what we got. But yeah, I think this area looks pretty cool. I will come back with shaders, though, when I finish the other village in today's episode, considering they will be so close to one another and kind of just walk over. Kind of wanted to do just like a quick uh, run through, though, without shaders on, just to kind of give you the vibes. Uh, let me turn off the, the max gamma thing, so it's a little bit darker here, too. But yeah, looking pretty cool, I think. But now, let's start preparing for the Dark Oak Village. We also gotta clear out this big ol' shulker mess. That'll take me a couple years, probably. <laughs> but I guess let's just get started with that, and then we can collect a whole bunch more materials. So off I went then, gathering up some materials, the main ones being some spruce wood. I mean, of course, I use that in literally everything. Terracotta, which we're going to use for some of the roofs of these buildings. We got dark oak, of course. We're in a dark oak forest, after all, and I have to fit that vibe. And then we got some stone to round it out. All the materials I gathered are in these shulker boxes right here. We have a bunch of stuff. Now, we are very close to where the birch village is. 
Rich Village is right there. I'm going to start building this one in this open area here. Let's just begin here by outlining a layout for this whole village. Now, instead of having a fountain in the middle of this one, I want to have like kind of a garden, I guess you can think of it. I want to have like a field for like mushrooms and trees and shrubs and stuff like that. I think that could look pretty cool. So we're just going to get like a weird shape here in the middle. Not going to be like perfectly symmetrical or anything like that. Honestly, the weirder looking the shape, the better. And I think that works really well as the centerpiece here. And then I think from here, we can probably have a house over here somewhere. Let's clear out a little bit of this grass. Now the boxes for these houses are going to probably look small, but it's okay because I think I'm going to make up for that in the... Uh, the roofs. The roofs of these houses are going to be really big. They're going to be the most interesting part of the build, I think. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I actually start building one of these houses. Now, I've kind of designed one of these houses in a creative world because this is an entirely new style to what I'm used to. So I definitely needed to practice a little bit. And the house that I did practice on was this size. We have a 9 by 7 rectangle here. We might add in a couple other like little rectangles branching off of this somewhere. I don't really know. Um, I mean, we're going to need an entrance somewhere, unless I just kind of throw the entrance in the side. That's totally an option. But once I start building this thing up, I'll kind of figure it out from there. I think we can certainly have another one back here then. Now, in the birch forest, each house was a completely different shape. But I think here, we're probably going to stick to like the same uniform building. But we're kind of just going to change up the roof. And by change up the roof, I kind of just mean the color. I think the shape of the roof will probably be the same, unless I decide to tweak that too. So these are where the four houses are going to go. I probably could have made this one over here a diagonal building. Um, but I'm really not good at building those, personally. So we're just going to keep it normal. <laughs> and I think the main build is going to go back here. Fairly certain I've mentioned this already in this episode. But this is going to be a library. But yeah, now that we have the layout down, I guess we can kind of just start building. I'm going to build one of these houses and then kind of go over what I did. And then we can use that same kind of schematic for the rest of these builds. But um, let's choose this one. Sure, it looks good to me. Now, obviously, this build needs a lot more decoration to it, but I'm going to tackle all the decoration once again once I get all of the structures built, exactly like I did the Birch Village. But this is the idea of the buildings for this area. I really like this shape. I try to get more intricate with the roof. I'm just trying to get better at making roofs in general. I usually make them very flat, very normal looking, but I try to make this one look a little bit more interesting. And I gotta say, I just kind of googled like fantasy houses in Minecraft and I found this picture and I used this as some inspiration, kind of stacking the different floors on top of each other in this sort of way. Now, of course, the image on Google is a much larger house, but I just liked that vibe. So I tried to capture that here. Now, these other three houses are going to be made in this exact style. It's probably going to be the exact building, just a different roof color. Now, actually, one of these other houses is going to be this exact building again with the same roof color. And the other two, I think I'm going to do a black roof for those. I feel like that could look really cool. We might change up the wall design then. Maybe instead of using spruce up here, Maybe we go ahead and use some dark oak or something like that, or maybe some regular oak, and then use spruce for the pillars and stuff. That might be a decent idea, just to change it up a little bit more. So let's get started building up the final three houses here for this village. Now, all four of the buildings are, you know, completely up. Obviously, they still have to be uh, decorated on the outside, but at least the structures are all in place. And I also lined out where the library is going to go. There's going to be a path that connects, like, through this little area back to the Birch Village. And I think seeing the library as, like, the first thing as you walk through this way would probably look really cool. But I got this nice-sized rectangle, fairly big on the inside. And I have, like, a mental image of, I think, the shape of this build. I'm just going to freehand this the best I can. Uh, that's just kind of what I do in this world. I freehand most things. But after we build up this structure, we can go ahead and decorate everything on the outside. With the path, with this, like, you know, little field garden thing in the middle. And, of course, the rest of these buildings, putting in the windows, the leaves, all that fun stuff. But for the last time in this video, let's build another building.
Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapses in this video. I believe that should be the final one. Um, and I also kind of want some feedback on them because I feel like this episode had a ton of time lapses in it. So if you want to, could you let me know in the comments how you felt about all the time lapses? If it was way too many, let me know and I'll try to have fewer the next time I do a build like this big. Next time I have an episode, you know, where I build this many buildings. But this is the library. I think it fits the vibe of this area quite well. You know, we combine the different roof colors here into one building. I'm comfortable with it. I think it looks pretty cool. Next up though, I want to start working on the centerpiece of this little town. So we're going to be working on the little mushroom garden. And actually I can kind of just take this mushroom here and we can kind of come up with some designs. So let me get this entire mushroom and let me try to come up with just some kind of design. I definitely think this looks pretty cool. I think it's a good upgrade to like the vanilla, you know, mushroom design. So I think we probably have like one more red one. Maybe then we have a brown mushroom in here as well. But I think this is gonna look really cool when everything gets placed down. But before I actually start building up more of the mushrooms, I wanna work on the wall around this thing. I think we're gonna use a lot of dark oak in this little like fence wall thing that we have going on. I'm gonna throw down some planks. We're gonna have some stripped dark oak and then just some regular dark oak chilling. Uh, maybe also some like fences and stuff once we build this up a little bit more. I think this is good. We have a good amount of space in here. I like the texturing on the wall. Uh, we're probably going to add another like red mushroom and then maybe a couple smaller brown mushrooms in here. Let me go gather a few more mushroom materials. All right, we built up a second mushroom and we got two small brown mushrooms over here as well. Now, I definitely have bone meal, right? Yes, yeah, sweet. Okay, so let's just kind of bone meal the grass all in here. I think that's probably all I really have to do in terms of like the vegetation uh, decoration in here. Let me just throw down some lanterns that I can probably call this little main area finished. Actually, I'll throw a little bit of the azalea stuff in here too, because why not? And I think we got ourselves a little garden. Acts as a cool centerpiece, I think, to this area. Now let's do the path the rest of the way around. And I think instead of using path block, I'm going to use coarse dirt. I like this, that's good enough for me. But we do have to link this path up with both the library back here and the birch uh, village. So let's go start doing that. All right, this is gonna be the final path design then. I think the mud adds quite a bit. Just a little like pop of a different texture in here. Looking pretty good. And now obviously there's way more stuff we can do to this path because I have to border it with something. And we'll probably just have some dark oak fences and then some leaves, which I actually have to go collect. Unless, do I have any extra from this village? I might. Hey, we have two stacks. Almost three stacks. The paths are now connected and decorated. So with that out of the way, I think we can move on to just bone mealing a little bit of this area. And then we can finally complete it by finishing off the buildings. I bone mealed a lot of this area, but I had to like terraform back here. That's why a lot of this is just dirt and you can't really bone meal that, it doesn't do anything. So I'm gonna wait for all that to grow before I bone meal everything else. So I guess while I'm waiting for this all to turn into grass, we can go ahead and start finishing up the houses finally. The front face of the buildings are now decorated. We got some light, we got some windows, got a couple like potted leaves looking pretty cool. And the absolute final thing I wanna do is just throw some lanterns around the library just to light it up. I should really stop myself because I'm just gonna keep finding random things I wanna change, but let me bone meal this and then I'll actually call this episode done. Now at the start of this episode, this area looked like this. And at the end, roughly a hundred days later, it has been transformed into these two villages. I'm really proud of how this build turned out and I hope you guys liked it as well. Thank you so much for watching this and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.